at the same time was the preaching movement. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to remark that I am a gardener, Mali gardener, and there is a big garden, and there are lots of sweet fruits. These fruits have to be distributed, but I have only two hands. I can't distribute so many fruits with just two hands. <coughs> so he is requesting us to please come to eat also the sweet fruits and you distribute also freely, free distribution of this fruits of Krishna praying. <coughs> and millions of hands are required to distribute these millions of fruits. So distributing Krishna Prem, we do in the form of distributing the process of bhakti, the holy name of Krishna, the transcendental books written by Srila Prabhupada, the prasadam offered to deities, and various opportunities to do seva. The holy name, the books, all these contain the seed of Krishna praying. Any person who comes in contact with the holy name, who comes in contact with transcendental literature, who comes in contact with the bona fide devotee of Krishna, who comes in contact with any part of the process, the seed has been planted. And now, if he continues to take care of the seed, then that seed will become the fruit, the fruit of Krishna brain. So we have a great opportunity in this ISKCON movement to eat the fruits and to distribute them. So this we should keep the motto of our life, to eat and to distribute, which means to practice Krishna Consciousness and to propagate Krishna Consciousness. To practice Krishna Consciousness to ourselves and to preach Krishna Consciousness to others. Inviting people to temple, giving out books, requesting them to chant the holy name of Krishna, giving them prasadam. All these are ways and means we preach Krishna Consciousness. So every devotee is duty bound. Every devotee carries this responsibility to practice Krishna consciousness nicely and to preach Krishna consciousness purely. This is our duty. We can't repay Srila Prabhupada, but this much we can do. This is Prabhupada minimum expects us. Prabhupada discussed that there are three types of devotees. Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, Uttam Adhikari. Uttam Adhikari is the highest devotee. Kanishta Adhikari is the beginner devotee. Madhyam Adhikari is the preacher. Prabhupada said, at least become Madhyama. He made this point. Prabhupada didn't want us to continue Kanishta. And whereas he blesses us to become Uttama, but he knows everybody may not rise quickly on that platform. So he requests us, he instructs us, at least become Madhyam. And Madhyam Adhikari and Kanishta Adhikari, what is the difference? Kanishta does not preach. Madhya Madhikari and Uttam Madhikari, what is the difference? Uttam does not preach. Madhyama preaches. So on both the sides, the difference is preaching. Kanishta does not preach because he is not qualified. Uttama does not preach because he is overqualified. 
He sees everybody as a devotee is home to preach. Krishna thinks I am so great. Baki dunya vaya bhaar mein. Doesn't preach. Uttama thinks everybody is so great. How can I preach? Praise Madhyama. Prabhupada. The mission of Srila Prabhupada. The mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that we preach. We tell to others about Krishna. We go and tell others Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna is Bhagavan. <coughs> we are servants of Krishna. We are part and parcel of Krishna. And we should chant Hare Krishna. Such a simple thing. Even just going and telling somebody Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead is very big preaching. Because many people are confused. Big, big scholars, big, big leaders, big, big intelligent people, big, big religionists, they are confused. Who is God? Some people think some light. God is some light. Some light inside. Some people think oh, everything is God. Some people think you are God, I am God, we both are God. You know, once in Dwarika, Krishna was sitting in the assembly with King Ugrasim and other ministers and associates. So one letter came. One messenger came with a letter in Dwarika. So the messenger, he read out the letter and he this was a very interesting letter. The messenger read out, this letter was to Krishna. And he says to Krishna, that I am real supreme personality of Godhead. The letter says, I am real supreme personality of Godhead. Out of my compassion, I have taken avatar to deliver the conditioned souls. And I have come to know that you are falsely claiming yourself as Supreme Person, Vasudev, whereas I am real Vasudev. So with this letter, I have hereby, I hereby instruct you to give up the false claim that you are God. Give up your Shank Chakra Gada Padma and come and surrender unto me. This is for your welfare. If you don't do this, then I will have to have a battle with you. This is the letter came in Dwar. From a king called Poundrak. Poundrak was from Purusha. And Poundrak had some friends and subordinates who would tell him that you are God. You are Vasudev himself. Absolute truth. Param Satyam. Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this foolish Pondrak started believing it. Because so many people were telling. So if one person tells, two people tell, three people tell, thousand people tell, you will start believing. Oh, they all cannot be wrong at once. So maybe I am God. You know, sometimes children play. One child becomes the king, another becomes subject, or somebody becomes police, somebody becomes chore. The child is play, you know. But the child who becomes the king in the play, if he starts thinking the whole life that I am king, that's foolishness. So Pondrak was such a foolish person that his subordinates, his followers, they started telling him, 
that you are Krishna, you are God. And this foolish wanderer, he started thinking like that, that I am Vasudev, I am Supreme Personality of Godhead. I have descended down to kill the Asuras and protect the conditioned souls, protect the devotees. Out of my mercy, I have come down here. So much so that, of course, he had just two hands. He got two false hands, maybe cardboard ka hands, and put it on his body to, you know, clear it up that I have four hands. And he had false Shankar Chakra Dada Padma, and that also was on the hand. And he would wear a yellow dress, and he wear a crown and a peacock feather. And he was so convinced that he is God, he sent a letter to real God. <laughs> Saying that you are fake, give it up. What a foolish person. And there are many foolish persons even today like this. In Krishna book, Shri Prabhupada writes, India is a God-making factory. <laughs> Every street one God is created. What kind of God is there <coughs> who is taking birth, who is getting disease, who is getting old, who is having a tooth, a headache, a fever, and even he dies? India has God who have beard, who have grey hair, who are becoming old. What kind of God is this? Producing ash and banana and gold ring in the air. God doesn't produce gold ring, he produces gold mines. He doesn't produce a banana, he produces fields. If you are God, why don't you make gold mines? Why you make one banana? You make whole bunch of fields of banana, few acres. So this is all bogus. So Prabhupada said, any person who is not God, if he claims to be God, then he is dog. That is the definition of dog. If a servant claims to be master, then he is bogus. <coughs> so every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. Nobody can be Krishna. Nobody can be God. God is Supreme Proprietor, Supreme Master, Supreme Enjoyer, Supreme Creator, <laughs> Supreme Controller. Are we? Are we Supreme Controller? Are we Little Controller? Can't even control our bathroom. And we think we are God? What is this? We are not enjoyers, we are not masters, we are not controllers, we are not proprietors, we are not creators. We don't even know how our body works. We don't even know how our nail grows. You know, scientists don't know how does the nail grow. Nail is living or dead? Living? Dead? See, already there is confusion. <laughs> We don't even know this much. And we think we created the world. So this is Maya, illusion. And Pondrak was so much into illusion that he wrote this letter. And he challenged Krishna to give up his weapons and to surrender to him. So after the messenger read the letter, what do you think must have happened in Dwarka? They had a big laugh. What a joke. <laughs> big laugh. Ugrasen laughed. Krishna laughed. All the ministers laughed. They were laughing like a wow. After the laughter was over, <coughs> Krishna replied to the letter. Krishna told the messenger, Please give my reply to your master as it is. <laughs> okay. 
and tell your master I call him rascal. Badmash. Rascal number one. Fool number one. And tell him he wants my weapons. I am coming to give him. Let me see if he can handle it. And he wants me to surrender at his feet, take shelter at his feet. I will kill him in such a way that jackals, vultures will eat him and his body will be at the shelter of dogs. What in Hindi nowadays is they say, Kutte ki maut marunga. <laughs> Krishna told him, go and tell this to your master. That I'll throw him to dogs. So Krishna is here to punish the Asuras. Who are the Asuras? Who are harassing the public? Who are killing the people? Who are harassing and torturing the people? Who are inflicting pain to the people? Who are taking away somebody's property? But a person who claims to be God, but he is not God, he is the biggest sinner. Because he is playing with the emotions, feelings, sentiments and faith of innocent people. A person who claims to be a guru or a sadhu or a pure devotee, but he is not. He is very big sinner. A thief plays with your property, but this person is playing with your faith. This person is playing with your surrender. This person is playing with your dedication. This person is exploiting you in the name of God, taking you away from God. A doctor in the name of cure, injecting poison. A police in the name of protection, stealing. That's worse. A honest thief, a honest thief is better than a dishonest police. Because when an honest thief is near you, at least you will be aware and you will protect yourself. But a dishonest police, you will not be able to protect yourself. So, a simple sweeper in the street is much better than a pseudo sadhu, than a fake sadhu, sitting and thinking about the sense objects but externally posing as a great devotee. He is called pretender. Mithyachari, <coughs> pretender, mithya, false behavior, diplomatic person, duplicit person, kutinati, and a pretender, he goes to hell. Krishna doesn't like such mithyacharis. Those who externally claim to be Krishna conscious but internally performing Krishna conscious to come in contact with sense objects, to perform sense gratification. Those who claim to be spiritual master but exploit their followers or disciples. Those who claim to be sadhu, baba, yogi, this, that, but actually are behind some sense objects, behind woman, money, beauty, wine, smoking, drugs or anything like that, they are mithya chari. A person should be honest. You must have heard, humility is the first step in Krishna conscious progress. You heard this? <coughs> if Krishna conscious progress is a ladder, the first step is humility. And the first step for humility is honesty. If a person is not honest, he can't be humble. To begin humility, one should be honest. You heard this in the childhood, honesty is the best policy. I have a bit changed it. Honesty is still the best policy. <laughs> We should continue to be like that. So Bhandrak, he was playing with people's faith. That's Asurik. So Krishna was so angry after he dispatched the messenger. 
Krishna took his army and he came to know Pondrak is in Kashi. Pondrak and the king of Kashi were friends. So Krishna went and attacked the kingdom of Kashi, the city of Kashi or Varanasi. Pondrak was also a Kshatriya, a brave person. He came out with two Akshavani divisions of army. One Akshavani division of army means around one lakh foot soldiers, around 65,000 chariots, 65,000 horses and so many other things. So he came out with two Akshavani and Kashiraj came out with three Akshavani to help his friend. And Dwarka army and Kashi and Pondra army, they were face to face. And first time in life Krishna saw Pondra. Again he had a big laugh. Wearing, he was wearing yellow dhoti and wearing a garland of forest flowers and having a crown, having a peacock feather and having a fake diamond here, Kaustu money. And he was having a fake saranga bow and two extra fake hands and fake Sudarshan Chakra and having a Garuda on his flag. And any person who would look at him will understand he is some theoretical actor, somebody doing drama in the stage. Like we sometimes see kids dressed as Krishna. As soon as we see, we understand he is playing as Krishna, but he is not equal to Krishna. Immediately we recognize. So he was like that. Krishna had a big laugh. And Krishna chastised Pondrak. He said, you claim to be real Vasudev. Today I will settle it in this battlefield. Whether I take shelter of you or your body take shelter of the dogs. And the whole army of Pondrak and Kashi Raj, they attack Krishna. And Krishna's army attack them. And Krishna with his club, with his sword, with his saranga bow, he killed all the destroyed all the weapons and killed all the army. Somebody's head was cut, somebody's hands, somebody's thighs, and elephants and horses and broken chariot, and there was a river of blood. Any ordinary person sees this, he will have a heart attack. The river of blood. But seeing that all the armies of Dwarka, they were getting more and more inspiration, more and more encouragement to continue the battle. And all this fighting was going on. <coughs> Finally, Krishna came in front of Pondrak. And Krishna challenged him for a duel. And before Pondrak could attack Krishna, Krishna with his arrows killed his horses, broke his chariot, and with his Sudarshan disc, he cut the head of Pondrak. He said, Pondrak, I am giving you my disc. Take it. And he killed Pondrak. Now Pondrak somehow, even though he is offender, but he was thinking of Krishna's form. Always. So he got Sarupya Mukti. Because of his offense, he was killed. And by being killed by the hands of Krishna, that offense was neutralized. And because he was thinking of the form of Krishna, he got four-handed Vishnu form in Vaikuntu. So becoming an enemy of Krishna is also beneficial. But that's not a favorable activity. Even enemies of Krishna get liberated. So there are two ways to get liberated. Become a devotee of Krishna and become an enemy of Krishna, become an asura. But the second one is risky. Because you have to become such an asura that nobody else can kill you. <laughs> then Krishna will come and kill you. Otherwise there are any agents. Brahma, Shiva, Indra, Chandra, Vayu, Agni, Durga, heart attack, cancer. So many agents are there. If they kill you, you don't get liberation. So that's not a favorable activity. And becoming a devotee of Krishna, very easy. And in Kali Yuga, super easy. 
and in ISKCON, super duper easy. <laughs> just chant the holy name of Krishna, just dance, just have prasad. It is chanting, dancing, feasting. Anyone of this is difficult? Anybody finds feasting difficult? <laughs> dancing difficult? Chanting difficult? Sometimes lectures may be boring, but that's all. So this is a simple process, Kevala Ananda Kanda. Simply, joyfully performed. Even child can do this. No qualification required, whether you are male, female, adult, child, old person, literate, illiterate, rich, poor, jnani, akyani, Hindu, Muslim. No, no qualification, no eligibility. Tell me one qualification and I'll show you several examples who does not have that qualification, still they are great devotees. There's no qualification required to love Krishna. He is right in our heart, 24 hours with us. He loves us so much, that's why he's there, waiting for us to turn towards him. So it's very easy, he's very lovable. So no qualification required. So pondered God Sarupya Mukti, he got liberated. Then Kashiraj, he wanted to take revenge of his friend. So he came in front of Krishna. And Krishna, with his Sudarshan Chakra, killed Kashi Raj. He cut his head. And he cut his head in such a way that Kashi Raj's head straight went and fell inside the city of Kashi in front of his palace. And people suddenly saw something came suddenly from the sky. And they were surprised. They got assembled there to know what is it and they could realize somebody's head and they thought our king, he has sent Krishna's head here <laughs> because when the Kashiraj went for the battle, he told his queens that today I will bring the enemy's head. You will see me fight like a valorous like cavalry, like a great, brave warrior, weird person, cavalrious person and I will bring the enemies Krishna's head here. So he told this to the queens. And you know when you tell something to woman, what happens? It goes on FM. <laughs> so the queens told to all the maid servants, today our king is going to bring Krishna's head. And maid servants told to the staff, the security. And that is a whole city came to know that today the king is going to bring Krishna's head. So when the head came, everybody knew what is this, this is Krishna's head. And they were very happy. The queens also came to see it. And but they realized, this is not Krishna's head, this is Kashira's head. And they all started crying and beating their chest and wailing and they were shocked and surprised. So because Kashira was boasting so much, so Krishna arranged this way to kill. And then after the battle, Krishna won and he went back to Dwarka. Now Kashiraj, he had a son, Sudakshina, and he performed the funeral rites of his father and he wanted to take revenge. He was very angry and he wanted to kill Krishna. And Kashi is the city of Lord Shiva, Vishwanath, he is a Lord of Kashi, Supreme Lord of Kashi, Varanasi. Lord Shiva is worshipped as Vishwanath there. So he performed lots of austerities and pleased Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva appeared and he asked him, what do you want? So he didn't tell Krishna's name, he just told, I want to kill my enemy. Literally he told, I want to kill my enemy. <coughs> Lord Shiva said, okay, this is the process. You give Ahuti on the southern, southern side of the Yajna with the Tantric Brahmanas. Then one demon will come out of it, Dakshin Agni. He is form of fire. And whomever you will send target, that personality, 
will kill that target. But just make sure the target is somebody who is opposite to Brahmanas. Somebody who is having blessings of the Brahmanas, that target will not kill. Somebody who is opposite to the Brahmanas, that target can kill. So then Sudakshina found out that many, many Brahmanas come to Dwarka and pay obeisances to Krishna. So he thought Krishna should pay obeisances to Brahmanas, a Kshatriya should pay obeisances to Brahmanas. But this is opposite, Brahmanas are paying obeisances, so definitely he is opposite to Brahmanas. He makes Brahmana forcefully pay his obeisances to him, so the target will work. This was his logic, such a foolish person. So he got some Tantric Brahmanas and a very private affair, they did a big yajna. And out of the southern side of the yajna, when they put Ahuti, a very big naked black person came out. His head was touching the clouds. Fire was emanating from his eyes and his mouth. <coughs> and he had a very red eyes, red beard, red hairs. <coughs> and when he would uh, take his tongue out, it would as if he is touching the clouds and licking them. And he had a big trident in his hand. The trident was also blazing fire. Very, very ugly, very, very dangerous, wicked looking. And he told Sudakshina, tell me what is my target. And Sudakshina said, go and kill Krishna and Dwarka Vasis. And that black personality who is uh, Dakshin Agni, who is the form of fire, blessed by Lord Shiva, he started running towards Dwarka and all the ghostly companions of Lord Shiva were also behind him. And as he was running and thumping the ground, it was whole earth shaking, it was as if earthquake is about to happen. And all the trees and the plants on the way, they were just getting burnt just by being his presence. So much fire was emanating from him. And when he came on the outskirts of Dwarka, the, there was chaos in the whole city. The citizens saw such a big fiery demon is coming with a black body so tall till the sky and trident in his hand and thousands and thousands of ghostly companions making such a nice, loud noise about to devastate the whole city of Dwarka. The citizens were so fearful, they immediately went to Krishna. This is the nature of a devotee. Whenever a devotee sees danger, he sees a problem, he goes to Krishna. A devotee is always dependent on Krishna. Even demigods who are so powerful, when they face a crisis, they go to Krishna. So if at all there is problem in life, if at all there is crisis in life, we should understand, it has come to give us an opportunity to intensify our dependence on Krishna. We need to increase the intensity of dependence, but when will we increase? The Shubh Murat is not coming only. We are just continuing stagnantly. Same quality of chanting, same quality of dependence, same relaxed attitude of the Jina hai Barsu, the long life, we practice devotional service nicely some other day, we do Mangal Aradi some other day, we we'll sit at one place at 16 long some other day. <laughs> so something has to happen to increase our intensity of dependence on Krishna. We need to go back home, back to Godhead when? This line? How many of us want to go this line? Please raise your hands. Some are not raising their hands. <laughs> Very nice. So if we die now, within the next second, 
How many of us think we will go? <laughs> Very nice. So this is only possible when we have full Krishna consciousness. So if if we are not full Krishna conscious, we will not go. So from today's present condition till the death, whenever it occurs condition, there has to be a change. If there is no change, then we will not go. Right? So when will we do that change? No. How do you to get a notice of death? No. We already got. Grey hair is one notice. <laughs> Wrinkles is another notice. Less eyesight is another notice. Falling of teeth is another notice. Your next body is another notice. Every day when the sun sets is a notice that one day has passed. You are closer to death. You are becoming old. You ask anybody what is your age, what do they say? What is your age? 84. 84. <laughs> 34. They say 34 years old. Already old. Or even 5 years old. Already old, we are getting old. We are getting closer to death. So a change has to occur. And we should not wait for that change to occur automatically. We will have to try to get that change. So we should make that change so that the dependence on Krishna increases, the intensity of dependence increases. So that's very essential. The Vakarvas, they all ran to Krishna with intense dependence. Krishna, Krishna, please save us. This demon is coming and killing us. He's going to burn and devastate whole Dwarka city. Please save us. At that time, Krishna was playing chess with wife Rukmini Devi and Uddhava was sitting. So Krishna heard this. He told Dwarka Vasis, please don't be afraid. I know from where this is coming. And Krishna didn't want to interrupt his game because he was winning at that time. <laughs> So Rukmini Devi, the wife, was getting defeated very rarely, such a thing happens. In all other games, wife once wins, here he was getting defeated, she was getting defeated. Krishna didn't want to interrupt this game, but the problem was so big, actually not very big for Krishna. Sudarshan Chakra was standing with folded hands there. Krishna said, do the net pull. <laughs> Sudarshan Chakra was very happy. Generally, Krishna specifies the target. This time, he didn't specify a target. That means full freedom. <laughs> right? Sudarshan Chakra was very happy. He immediately went. And so much fire emanated from Sudarshan Chakra that that demon who was also emanating fire froze. He froze. Because Sudarshan Chakra was going with full speed towards the demon with lots of heat. So this demon who was coming with his own fire, he froze. And most of the ghostly companions, they got destroyed by the fire of Sudarshan Chakra. And this demon, his path forward was blocked because Sudarshan Chakra was emanating heat. So what did he do? He took a U-turn. Went back to Kashi. Actually, Sudarshan Chakra's job was over. The demon went back to Kashi. But because he had blank check, <laughs> he didn't stop. He went behind the demon. <laughs> now, the Tantra says, the Tantric process says that if the product of the Yajna cannot destroy the target, because it has to destroy somebody, it will destroy the origin. <laughs> So this demon went and destroyed the Tantra Brahmanas who were performing Yajna and Sudakshina. And Sudarshan Chakra came and he destroyed the demon. 
But that's not how he had a blank check. So he thought the city of Varanasi is the place where all this originated. He devastated the whole city of Varanasi. All the palaces, all the crossroads, all the temples, everything Sudarshan Chakra devastated. It was much, much dangerous than nuclear bomb. Everything was finished. And then Sudarshan Chakra came back. Happily. So for Krishna to protect his devotees is very simple. He has enough potencies who will protect his devotees. Depending on Krishna is always 100% success rate. Will 100% be protected. 100% will get protection. 100% will be successful. 100% the prayers will be answered. So Pautral who claimed to be God was destroyed by Krishna. And the Dwarkavasis who had danger, they were protected by Krishna. And Krishna all did all this without much effort. That is God. If God has to do some effort, then he is not God. The very definition of God means he doesn't have to do any effort. His energies, Krishna's energies are first class. Krishna's servants are first class. They perform their service without even Krishna telling. In Golok Vrindavan, all the associates of Krishna, they are so much spontaneously engaged in Krishna's service that they serve Krishna in such a way that Krishna's desires, Krishna's desires are fulfilled before he desires. That is Golok Vrindavan. If Krishna desires a mango in Golo Vrindavan, before the desired mango comes in his heart, a plate of mango will be there in his hand. And Krishna says, Abhi tumhe socha bhi nahi. That is Golo Vrindavan. That is our home. That is the place where we have left and come here. Here your desires are fulfilled. Even after putting effort, they are not fulfilled. There all the desires are fulfilled before the desires come. Every dream is a reality there. Every walk is a dance there. Every speech is a song there. And every day is a feast. Every meal is a feast there. And compared to here in Bombay, so much pollution, not interesting. Very bad bargain. We got ourselves into a very bad investment. We left our nice home in Golo Vrindavan and we are here making our bungalow. Oh, very bad bargain. So we should go in this place, finish our activities in this birth and go back home, back to Godhead. Every intelligent person should pursue this goal of life. Getting this human form of life is so rare and getting the association of sadhus is more rare and fortunate. And now we have got this opportunity. We have come in contact with Srila Prabhupada's institution is gone and his devotees and his books. Such a beautiful deities and wonderful process. So we should be very serious, extremely serious. We should be seriously serious and practice the process of bhakti. Getting up early morning, doing mangalati, chanting our rounds, hearing Bhagavatam. And that will help us to purify, attract the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we go back to Goloka, we go back to the spiritual world from where we have come. So a practitioner devotee should very seriously and strictly follow this process hoping that by mercy of Krishna we will achieve success and go back home, back to God. Okay, we'll end here. Thank you very much.